Blood supply of bone, a long bone consists of three parts, two ends and a shaft. The ends of the bone are known as epiphysis. The shaft is known as diaphysis. The ends of the bone which ossify that is develop from the Secondary centers are known as epiphysis. The shaft of a long bone which develops from primary center is known as diaphysis. The epiphyseal ends of the diaphysis are known as metaphysis. A typical long bone has blood supply from the following sources. Number one, nutrient artery. Number two, epiphyseal artery. Number three, periosteal arteries. And number four, metaphyseal artery. Nutrient artery. It enters the shaft through nutrient foramen. And it divides into an ascending and a descending branches. The nutrient artery supplies medullary cavity, inner two-third of the cortex and metaphysis. Epiphyseal artery. It is derived from periarticular vascular arcades and it enters the ends of the bone or the epiphysis through numerous vascular foramen and supplies the epiphysis. Periosteal arteries. It is present in the periosteum, that is the outer covering of the bone. And it supplies the outer one third of the cortex. The metaphysial arteries are derived from neighboring vessels and it supplies the metaphysis. In children, the metaphysis is the zone of active growth and the metaphysis has rich blood supply through end arteries which has an hairpin bend. So, it is a common site of osteomyelitis in children. Because the bacteria or emboli gets trapped in the hairpin bed. After epiphyseal fusion, see here, there is epiphysis here, the epiphyseal fusion has taken place. After epiphyseal fusion, vascular communication are established between the epiphysis and the metaphysis. And there are no more end arteries in the metaphysis, and no longer it is subjected to osteomyelitis. <laughs>